Everybody else is getting it. Okay. That's good. Let's just set those other Let's go to the church site. Yeah. 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 Karen's watching it. Stars. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm standing here and I dressed a little warm today, so I've got a long sleeve shirt on because I knew it would be a little cooler outside. But for those that are, are, are watching us today, we did move it into the building because it is just windy outside this morning. And uh, I was thinking, you know, we were blessed that it was supposed to be raining today. Remember earlier in the week they were calling for quite a bit of rain, so it was like, okay, we're going to have to wait till the last minute. So we went to the last minute this morning too, but we're inside, we're feeling good, and uh, we don't have any music today, um, so it may not last quite as long, and uh, we can get out of these warmer clothes if we need to uh, when we get home now. So it is good to be here in the house of the Lord, and I want to welcome those. I know there are some who are watching now, and uh, we want to uh, uh, say we're glad that you're with us, and uh, we're glad that we're happy. We've got some folks here today that uh, haven't been with us for a while, but yet we're still uh, enjoying this time together. We would remind you that we will continue to go outside, though, for quite for a while. Um, I think we it's been kind of enjoyable to go outside and just kind of spend time in, in God's world, and um, uh, we'll see how that progresses. And then it'll be like today. It'll be sort of a last-minute thing if we need to come inside at times. But hopefully this will be sort of our last real bitter, windy day like this, and we can enjoy the outdoors together, uh, which seems to be encouraging some more folks to come out at times. And so uh, be mindful of that as we meet again uh, next week, that that's what we'll do. Um, you're very lucky. I, I did happen to put a PowerPoint together, so I wasn't sure what we were going to do. But we have that for today's worship. Just a couple of announcements. One <coughs> that was brought to my attention this morning. We do need to uh, think about our graduates uh, whether it's high school, I guess, or college, uh, those persons, if you will uh, either let me know or let uh, Jill Bowman know, that way, um, I guess we will do that more toward June is when we uh, typically will do that. And so if you would just remind us of that, uh, who those might be, I think we've, we've named a couple of folks we've thought about, but uh, we just want to give you guys a chance to uh, share with us if you know of anyone that's associated with our church uh, who might be graduating uh, this year. We'd also like to remind our church board we'll be meeting at 7 o'clock on Tuesday evening. That'll be here in the sanctuary. Um, and then um, we did sort of think of a, a good theme Sunday for May 30th, didn't we? We said it'd be Beach Sunday. It won't be one where you bring your bathing suits, but it'll be sort of your little uh, fancy floral shirts and your nice attire. I know a couple folks that have those things, and we might have a little sand out there that you can play in if you like to. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Uh, and, 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 and that. So, any other announcements that you can think of at this moment? Uh, we are closed in in the summer. Do you believe that? That uh, on Beach Sunday, that would be really kind of the unofficial first day of summer, our first weekend of summer. That's Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we'll be mindful of that. If there are no other announcements, we will begin our time with uh, our words for worship. And I do have to thank Ava for doing this at the last minute with me, and so I appreciate her helping out this morning. Here are these words. Come, God gathers us for worship, like a mother hen gathers her brood under her wings. Our God, loving, nurturing. In love, God saves and supports us, teaching us the way we should go. 
trusting in God, we continually offer our praise. Let us pray. In you, O oh God, every family on earth receives its name. Illumine our homes with the light of your love. We thank you for the gifts of love we have received from our mothers and those who have served as mothers in many ways. Nourishing us and guiding us as we grow to be who we are. As we have been loved by them, so we are loved by you, O oh God. Join us this day of celebration as we rejoice in being loved as you grant us peace in Christ, Jesus our Lord. So, we come to worship in his holy name. Amen. Even though we don't have music today, I did pick a couple of hymns that are very familiar to us that we can just sort of sing a cappella. We gather together will be the first one, and it's only the first verse, and I do have the words up if you put those. So um, maybe I should have Sheldon help me a little bit uh, get that word in. I think this is an easier song to sing, so let us try this together. We gather together to ask the Lord to sing. He turns to me. sharing our gifts. It's just our weekly reminder that we are called as God's people to continue, even in these uh, unusual times that we are, are experiencing, times that seem to be, I would say, growing a little bit back to some normalcy at times, and that we are still called to share with God what we have been receiving from Him, whether it is in the gifts of offerings which we give you that opportunity after the service to place in our box that we have here. It's in the front today. Normally it would be in the back. But we have this as you leave. You can leave your gift here. Uh, or it could be gifts. <laughs> we could have used it today if you have a gift of playing an instrument or uh, of singing or one of those things that we could have offered that to you in this time. But we don't do, the, do that mostly because we weren't sure that we would be inside. We were going to be outside. So uh, we are blessed that we continue to have folks who can share with us in a variety of ways. Let us reflect on that for just a moment, and then I will enter us into a time of prayer. Let us pray. God of the universe, thank you for your promises, for your promises are sure. You are faithful, and I can rely on you. We can rely on you. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. Help us to freely give, for it to freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. May you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. And Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine upon us and turn your face towards us and give us peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, we got to knock it out of the park, sir. Well, I know. How about another homemade coupon book? Oh. I didn't feel so well last year. She ended up using all of those coupons to make grocery lists after she ran out of post-it notes. Plus, she doesn't really need our permission to make us wash the car. Who breakfast in bed? That flop last year. On her birthday, remember, she was cleaning pancake batter out of the inside of the microwave for weeks. How about a crock pot? Ugh, wrong. On so many levels. Just the word crock pot. Who was that? I don't know. A mixed CD of her favorite music. No, we share music library on the computer. I'll kind of put a pamper on the surprise. Yeah. Well, we could get her roses. Mm, gotta save that for Valentine's Day. And her birthday. And my birthday. This is hard. I know. Well, we have to think of something. Mm. We cannot give her another IOU. No. That just says we forgot, or we're stupid, or boring, or all three. 
How about a day at the spa? Two people rubbing my feet. Have you seen my nails lately? Cracks the size of the San Andreas Fault. Mom, that's gross. Jason, I love to rub your feet, honey. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks, Jason. You're awesome. Happy Mother's Day. I would invite you to share in our scripture this morning. Our scripture is coming from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 20 through 24. It's a very interesting scripture to uh, contemplate as we're thinking about this day. Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectively to ask a favor. What's your request? He asked. She replied, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and one on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I'm about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied, we are able. And Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will sit at my right or my left. My father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. And when the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. And that's, the, that's our scripture for the morning. May we be blessed with the reading of God's word. We'll enter to a time of prayer at this time. We'd like to give you an opportunity if you'd like to share any joys or concerns on this day. Just spout them out. Right. Okay. Um, continue to remember your sister in prayer. Uh, tomorrow we'll know for sure whether or not she has to have surgery on her broken foot. Looks like not, but hopefully she won't. They'll confirm that tomorrow. Continue to remember um, Jeff and Tammy. Jeff um, lingered around well. He was off the vent for 24 hours, but they determined they needed to go back in and do the surgery again on his colostomy because that wasn't operating properly, so that's a step back. So hopefully he will recover from that quickly. Um, they're starting to look at long-term rehab centers, so that's encouraging. And be with Jill and her best friend as they leave on Friday to go to Florida for a few days and with me and my um, blurry mother's heart. <laughs> <laughs> And me, the concern is for us is we're jealous, so, because she's going to Disney for a few days, so. But yeah, Cheryl reminded us to uh, be in prayer for my sister, whose foot is still recovering. Um, she broke, I think it was like four toes on this foot. Um, and uh, my sister has mobility issues anyway, and so uh, to have this happen, and so they'll determine. I think tomorrow, is that when they said that if she needs that surgery or not? If not, it'll just be a cast, which would be the sort of what we're praying for, because, um, you know, surgery is just not what you would want to have. Which also means for us, my mom is coming up for the week. We're going down to Roanoke to get her and have dinner. And I will say my prayer for surgery for dad is we don't know what he's going to do for the week. He, mom's prepared food for him, but you know, who knows? So he'll, 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 he'll make it, I think. And we'll meet him next week. And for Jeff, we want to continue to pray for him. And um, also, um, yeah, for Jill, we we pray that they'll, they'll do well and have a good time. We know they'll have a good time. So, anyone else? And yes, pray for Cheryl because, yeah, she'll be thinking about that for, for, for a week, a few days. Mostly it is the flights and getting those things and trips to be fine. Yes, ma'am. Um, um, my, uh, my, my birthday car and next twenty and my boy is 61. Not yet, 62. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's having birthdays now? I'm going to see my mom's birthday. I'm going to see my mom's birthday. I'm going to see my mom's birthday. She's the 20th and she's ahead of the game. Whose birthday is the 20th? I forget. Oh, man, 20. <laughs> Yours? Okay. <laughs> Who else is having a birthday? We're not getting supper. Another one. 
got here? I says, when's Perry's? Thursday. Thursday, okay. They outed you, Perry, I'm sorry. And who else did she mention? I think I think all of that was actually for me. Okay. But okay. Greg's is coming. I put Greg in here the 19th. So we can uh, celebrate their birthday, I guess, next week yeah. or the week after. I guess we'll 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 still get their birthdays in. But we appreciate Lena giving us fair warning or or at least giving us the heads up to remind us. <laughs> Of when those birthdays are, so we need to thank Lena for that. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be thanking her. That's like the people who really thank her for getting the newsletter times and mentioning that. To her. So, anyone else? Remember the pray for the church board meeting coming up. There's a lot of things probably needs to be taken care of, and then with us getting back to more normal mm -hmm. normalcy. Yeah. Some of the issues that we need to take care of. Sure. But yeah, just remember all of us and the board members in your prayers. <laughs> the church board and our meeting, just kind of, as we're starting to filter back in, we need to be thinking about what we need to do on our next steps and uh, and how, how to continually uh, continue to open up a little bit in the midst of it all. And how we'll continue to just sort of uh, share with our outside uh, worship services. And we'll, we'll do some things. So yeah, thank you, Greg. Anyone else? Oh, yes, we do need to sing Perry. <laughs> we'll do that now. Thanks. You can play that. You know, your wife, Cheryl, Ava, they're, they're over here there. So, who wants to help start that? Happy birthday to Perry. Um, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. story said, the little boy was talking with the girl next door. I wonder what mom would like for Mother's Day. Well, the girl answered, well, you could promise to keep your room clean and orderly. You could go to bed as soon as you're told. You could brush your teeth before bed, and you could quit fighting with your little sister, especially at the dinner table. The boy looked at her puzzle, and he said, no. I mean something practical. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
as kids, we try to think about those things. What do you get, Mom? This is Mother's Day. It is a day that we have set aside to celebrate Mother's past and present. Today, you might find yourself taking Mom to a restaurant, giving her flowers or candy, or maybe some nice gift. Or maybe you'll just give her some peace and quiet for a moment. And for those whose mothers have passed on, you might spend time reflecting on the memories of her and what she meant to you and what she taught you about life, about love, and about Jesus. And this goes for parents in general, but today is not Dad's Day, so we have to spend time with mothers. We can see how important mothers were even in Scripture, even when thinking about how women themselves were treated by this culture around them. Women who at times were treated differently in such a way that they didn't even count in certain experiences of Scripture. Think about the story of the 5,000, the 4,000. Think about other stories in there. But I think that Scripture treats women in a much different light than what we think at times. And when we think about mothers, we think about that and the importance of what they have in our own lives. We know who Jesus' mother was. Mary, who lived long enough to even see Jesus go to the cross. While that doesn't seem very joyful or very good, it was in many respects. And I think even in the midst of her own sadness and grief, she knew the importance of what it meant for Jesus to be there in that moment. We know about the early mothers in the Old Testament. We know about Sarah. We know about Eve. We know about Moses, Noah's wife. We know about Rachel and Rebecca. We know of what they meant to the men around them and what they taught even their own sons. But how about the mom? who loves her boys so much that she asked Jesus for a very strange request. A request that seems kind of out of realm for what Jesus might be able to do. Looking at our text again for the morning, we're reminded of this moment of Jesus, who was with his disciples. And many times we don't see the family relationship of the disciples. We don't see their brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers being revealed to us. Whether they have them as living parents at this moment, or ones who are just not in the picture, because there is no need to see them in the midst of the stories that the gospel writers are telling. But here in this moment, we reveal that James and John's mother is possibly a follower of Jesus herself. That she is undoubtedly in the midst of this group at times. And we have to remind ourselves that just because there were 12 disciples who were there to learn from Jesus and, and learn from the experiences that he is sharing with them, it doesn't mean there wasn't other followers around. There were others who were always gathered in various places where Jesus was. But these are the men he set aside that are going to be the ones who will continue the ministry after he leaves. But here we see the mother of James and John, who are the sons of Zebedee. And she comes to Jesus with her sons. And she kneels respectively, respectfully to ask a favor. She knew who Jesus was. She knew what Jesus could do. 
She knew the divinity of Christ in, the moment, in this moment. And she has this odd question that she asked Jesus in this moment. He says, what is your request? And she says, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in the places of honor next to you, one on the right and the other on the left. This being a high honor, is it not? To sit next to Jesus in the kingdom of God amongst all the other disciples. And the other ones, much like Peter and Matthew and, and, and Judah, you know, the one Judas, not the other one, and James and all the other ones who were there. To say to Jesus, these two need to be the ones that sit beside you. Kind of saying they are more important than the others. It's interesting to me that Jesus doesn't say, no, I can't do that right off the bat, does he? Because it makes you wonder, did the boys put her up to this? Did the boys say to, Jesus, to his mom, why don't you ask him? Maybe she had, had, had sort of offhandedly said that to, to James and John, you know, maybe when, when the kingdom comes, we realize what it means that you should you guys should sit on the right and left. You're brothers. You've done a lot for Jesus. So Jesus then brings it back to them, doesn't he? He brings it back to James and John in this moment, and he says, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? What is that bitter cup of suffering he's talking about? That's that moment when he's about to be prepared for crucifixion, isn't it? It's when he's going to go on trial. It's when he's going to be flogged. It's when he's going to be beaten with, with whips and beaten with fists. And abused in, in a very violent, physical way. And he says, do you realize what you're asking? Do you realize what suffering I am about to go through? And can you do it yourself? Have you gotten to the place in your own lives, in your own following of me, that you can go to the same places that I go in this moment? Do you understand what you're asking? And that's, a, that's an appropriate way for Jesus to respond to this, isn't it? Because they don't realize what he's about to experience in this moment. But what do they say? They say, yes, we are able. I'm not sure that if they were not being very, and I'm, I'm not sure that if they were being honest about this. I think that they had resigned themselves to knowing what it might mean for them. Now, we're going to see that when the rubber hits the road, what's really going to happen, don't we? Especially when Jesus goes to the child, especially when Job, Jesus is brought before the Sanhedrin, the, 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 the religious leaders in front of the Roman officials and preparing for crucifixion. We're going to see where they all go, aren't we? But when they gather back, there's this moment where all the disciples sort of realize what now they are in for, what now they need to be doing, what now they are prepared to do with their lives. Jesus says, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup. You will indeed experience something. Now we know that James does, is martyred, John is the one who will continue to live and write the book of 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and Revelation, being exiled on the island of Patmos. But it's all because they follow him that these things happen. Jesus says, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. Because who is the only one that can make that decision? Jesus says, it's only my Father who can make that decision. It is not up to me. Now, it concludes by saying, now it concludes a little bit later, there's more to this particular text that, that we could have gone into, but we don't need to because that's not what we wanted to share about. But we do see in verse 24, which I think is kind of interesting, and you don't, kind, of, kind of can't blame them, that the other disciples are, they're just a little ticked. 
that, that this question would even be asked. What do you mean? The story is about not just that at times, this question. It's about this mother who comes and asks this request of Jesus for her sons. I'm glad Jesus didn't say something to her at that moment. And I don't think his intention was to do that. To say to her, what do you mean? What are you talking about, woman? Because I think he understood in that moment what a mother's love is all about. I think there's a couple of things to think about as we reflect upon this text for a little bit. And these are just some reflections that you can go with. What is said about mothers in the midst of this text here this morning? There's three things I thought of. There could be more. Is they love their children. This mother, the, son, the wife of Zebedee, loved her children, didn't she? She loved James and John. It says that they only want the best for their children. Is that true? You only want the best for your children. It may be a, a strange request like this, but it's because you want them to have what they can have. She's going, I want them to sit on the right and left. As a mom, that's probably what you might think. I want them at the appropriate place in that. Stay with Jesus. And the other thing is, I thought about it in this, is that they want them to have that solid relationship with Jesus. This mother has has sent her children to be, or has, has not said anything to these boys about being with Jesus. She wants them with him. So much so, she's going, Kent, I want Jesus to have you sit on my, his right and his left. So what's that about mothers? They love their children, they want the best for their children, and they want them to have this solid relationship with Jesus. We can think of other things, can't we? We think a lot with this scripture, but I think those are the three that, that, that are very appropriate in the midst of this scripture. You know, I always think about Paul's commendation of Timothy's mother and grandmother when he says, I remember your genuine faith, for you shared the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that faith continues strong in you today. Moms have a great influence over our lives because of what they can do, because of, 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 of the work that they can share, about the faith that they can give us. And again, dads, you can too, but this is not your day. Your day comes later. And I always like that scripture from Paul because that's a wonderful reminder of how important women are in our lives. And the influence that mothers, grandmothers, whether you have children or not, you can still be a mother to others. And great and, and, and exude great influence on people. Especially when it comes to What a wonderful text, isn't it? To ponder upon what it means. To watch this mother who loved her boys. Who wanted the best for her boys. Who wanted them to continue to have this wonderful relationship. With not only their Savior, but her Savior as well. And so we have to conclude with these words. Happy Mother's Day. All right, our hymn. Now, 
Shelly, you might get, it's faith of our fathers, which you say faith of our mothers. And this one maybe just a little difference. I was trying to think to myself, okay, I gotta get that tune right. Because go up a little bit. It's got these great uh, lyrics to it. That's just a little different from what we think about, but I think it reminds us of what mothers might be. Okay, Shelby, you might have to help me a little bit with the tune. Faith of our fathers. Um, faith of our fathers. Fathers living still. starts with this particular scripture, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. So go now in the comfort and peace of the one who gave us birth, gave birth to us. Go in the assurance that the comforter is always with us. Go to give comfort and peace to others. Divine wisdom guide us as we go forth on paths of peace. And the scripture says, may she give us blessings more precious than silver or gold. And it's talking about our mothers. That's that wonderful scripture from Proverbs which describes mothers. And sometimes we think about the mothering, comforting part of what God is to give, us, give to us. And I want you to be careful what I'm saying when I say these things. It's not that God's our mother, but the characteristics that we might have sometimes. May we find joy in sharing these blessings with others, and may wisdom empower us to change our world. Amen. God is wonderful. And while our mothers are special, inviting, and influencing, it's that nurturing part of God that we experience in this day. The comfort that he can bring. I like the intro that we have where it says it's like the mother hen who carries us as, as, as broods of uh, little chicks, I guess, under her wings, that God cares for us and loves us. Blessings in this day go in the peace of God. <laughs>